Hi everyone, this is Dr. Wes Fryer. Today is February the 17th, 2021, and in this video I'd like to show you how you can create your own scratch maze project, a one-level maze, and this is actually for the most recent version of Scratch. I did a video about this uh, a number of years ago for Scratch 2.0, <clears throat> so this is an updated version for Scratch 3.0, which has actually been out for a while. Um, I want to encourage you, if you uh, are not finding this video on this website, um, to visit my website, mdtech.cassidy.org. That is where I have my lessons, and this basic maze project includes a link. I'll <clears throat> I'll include this in the YouTube description as well. Um, but this just shows you the six or I guess seven blocks, seven script blocks that you're going to need in order to create this project. Um, and actually, let me just show you these real quick and then we'll do it. So we're going to need to create four different scripts to control the sprite that we're going to use to drive around our maze. So we're going to use those four scripts. On the background of our maze, we're going to draw uh, boxes so that we can create the actual maze. And then we'll also create a goal, which is the place we want to go to. You can choose what color, but you're going to have the walls a different color than your goal of where you're wanting to go. And then the, the other thing you're going to have is a sprite, and you want that to actually be um, a colored block. Uh, you can choose what that is. You can do something else, but that's what I'm going to show you. So we have to tell the sprite that we're going to be moving around with the arrow keys where to start, and so that's going to be a script. And then we need to have two scripts that are going to constantly be checking. This one checks to see if we're touching the wall, and so we're going to use the eyedropper tool to make sure we get the right color. And then over here, the last one, it's going to wait until we are touching whatever we say is our goal, and then we're going to say that you win. Okay, so let's do it. I'm going to go over here to Scratch, and I'm going to click Create. And I think the first thing I'll go ahead and do is I'll just draw my, uh, my actual maze. So down here in the bottom right corner, I could create a new backdrop, but I don't need to create a new one. I'm just going to click underneath backdrops to view my backdrops. So instead of being on the sprite, I'm on my backdrops, and I have backdrop one. Now I can click up here in the upper left corner on backdrops, and this is where I'm going to draw my maze. So you can choose to make your walls any color you want. I think I'm going to make my walls red. I would recommend that you choose the fill color that you want, and then on the outline, which is the outside, you're going to click on this in the bottom left corner that looks like a red diagonal line. That is transparent, so you're not going to have an outline color, you're just going to have a fill color. Now we're going to select the rectangle tool, and we can go ahead and start to draw our maze. And you can do this however you want. Um, I think I'm just going to draw simple little uh, little rectangles like this, and I'll start up here in the corner, and I'm going to go over here. Um, but once you've drawn these, if you want to move them, you can use the arrow keys. You can click and drag them. If uh, you don't want one of them, you can click on it and press the delete key. If you make a mistake, you can choose undo, and it'll bring that back. Um, but yeah, you're just going to want it to have one single color, fill color only, with no outline, and you're going to draw your background, okay? The, <clears throat> the other thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need to choose where I'm going, and I think I'll make that yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and choose yellow, and then over here in the corner, I'm just going to uh, select my rectangle tool again to draw, and I'll just draw my rectangle. So that's going to be where I'm trying to go to win my maze. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so now I'm ready to add my uh, my sprite and, and my script. So here on this the uh, Scratch Cat, which is my first little sprite, I'm just going to click the trash can to delete him, and then I'm going to create a new sprite, which I'm going to paint. So you're going to click on the sprite, or on the uh, choose a sprite icon here in the bottom right corner, but don't search. You're going to click on the second one up that looks like a paint icon and choose paint, and you're going to want to choose a different color. So I'm going to make my uh, color blue, and then just uh, use your rectangle tool again and draw a, a square. That's what I'm going to do is just use a square. Now, here is an important thing. Notice here in the middle I have some crosshairs, and that shows the middle of my sprite. You need to make sure you drag your little sprite, your square, to the very middle there. If you don't do that, your, um, uh, your, your sprite in, in your game is going to glitch, and it won't work correctly. So don't have it 
off to the side. Make sure it's centered right in the middle, okay? So now over here on my stage, which is this area to the right, I'm gonna go ahead and drag my sprite where I want it, want it to start. And I'm gonna start up here in the upper left corner. Again, you can change this uh, to, to be different and that's fine. Now I'm ready to build my six scripts. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come up to events and I'm going to uh, first off do my control scripts. So I'm gonna say, when I press the up arrow, I want to point in the direction. So I'm going to um, choose point in direction and I'm gonna click on it and I could go ahead and just put in the number zero to go up. You can also drag the, it looks like hands of a clock, but of course there's 360 degrees in a circle. So you can just drag this where you want if you wanna do that, but it's gonna be up, which is going to be zero. And then you're going to say move 10 steps, okay? So now when I do that, I push up, my sprite starts to go up. Okay, I'll, I'll drag them down here to the middle. Now, you can go ahead and drag these scripts out again, go to events and drag those out, but I really like to use this little trick where you, on a touchpad, a laptop, you can use two fingers to two finger tap, or if you have a right mouse, you right click, and you can just choose duplicate. Isn't that cool? And so now, instead of up arrow, I'm gonna choose down arrow, and instead of zero, I'm gonna say 180 degrees. So now, when I press my down arrow, look at that, I'm pressing down, I'm pressing up, I can go up and down. I can't go side to side yet, but I can go up and down, okay? I need to do two more. Again, these are all on that sheet that I have linked in the YouTube video description and also on our lesson plan. I need to do left arrow, and so this time it's gonna go to negative 90, and I can just you know drag the, the, the hands there, or if I want to put negative 90, I can. And then the last one's gonna be right arrow, and I'm gonna make that go over here to the right. So check this out. Now I can use my mice, or not my mice, I can use my arrow keys, and I can navigate. But what's happening? Ooh, I just go right through the wall. I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna need to add some additional scripts. Um, the next one is, because I've got my four movement scripts here, I'm going to tell my sprite to start up here in the corner. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say when the green flag is clicked under motion, go to this XY. Because I already put my sprite here, it's going to automatically pick up those coordinates. The middle of the, of the sprite, of the scratch stage, which is what you use to tell the sprite where to go, is zero, zero. When I go to the left of the central axis, it's negative, and then when I go up above the, the x-axis, it's in the middle, it's positive. So you can look at the numbers and figure that out, or just drag your sprite where you want it, and then at that point, drag out, go to x, y, and it'll exactly have that coordinate. To show you how that works, uh, if, I, if I move it here and I click the green flag, look what happens. It comes back up here to the top. Okay, I only have two more scripts left. Um, I'm going to need, again, a green flag as an event, and I'm going to say that this is gonna be a forever loop. So forever, the program, when it's running, is gonna be checking this, and inside the forever is going to be this if, uh, if blank then, okay? So what do I want? I wanna see if this is touching the wall. So I have to go to sensing under blue, and I'm going to choose the one that says touching. But actually I want it to choose touching color because that's what I want. Now when you drag this out, your, the action point is your mouse button. So drag it and make sure your mouse, which right now is the hand, is right over the spot where you want. Now this is a green color. I want this exact red. So don't click on this and guess and try to, ooh, I wonder what my red was. Use this little button here at the bottom, which is the eyedropper. Click the eyedropper, move your mouse on the stage so it's right over the color you want, and then left click. Look at that. It exactly picked up that color. And this is why you want all of your walls to be the same color. So now it says forever check if I'm touching red. What do we want to have it do? We want it to bounce. So under motion, we're going to tell it to turn, and we want it to actually turn around. That's a 180, okay? So we say turn 180 degrees. You're going to put in 180, and then we're going to say move 10 steps, okay? Let's test it and see if it works. So now I hit my green flag, and look what happens. Ooh, I cannot cross 
that line. So I'm going to have to go around that. It just goes back. Now you can also change it to go back to the starting point if you want. That makes your maze a little bit harder. Um, but I'm not quite done because when I come down here to the end, when I touch this yellow, I want to say you win, and it doesn't do that. But that's because I still need one more script. So the last script, and this one is on your sheet, is going to be when the green flag is clicked, you're going to be waiting until. And so you're going to scroll down uh, under control and choose wait until, and we're going to use that same sensing block, touching color, okay? Wait until you're touching, and remember, don't guess the yellow that it is. Click on the eyedropper and move your mouse on the stage over to that color so you get exactly that color. So wait until I'm touching that color, and then you can have it do just about anything you want. I'm going to say, say, you win, okay? And you can, you can leave it like that. So... That, that is basically it. The, the last things that I have to do, and then I'll test the maze to show you that it works, is I'm going to say uh, what my title is. So I'm going to say my maze example. And then I'm going to click the share button. If you don't have a orange share button, you're going to need to verify your Scratch account because you can't share your Scratch projects until you've actually done that. And then, then you can turn this project in. You can copy and paste it. Um, you can give some directions to people. So use the arrow keys to navigate to the yellow uh, finish line. Okay. And I could put some other information about credits and stuff here, but I'll leave that as it is. And let's do it. So now I'm going to click on my green flag and I'm going to try to see if I can go through the walls. Look at that. I can't. It blocks me when I'm trying to go through the walls. And now, if I navigate around and get to my yellow ending block, it's going to say, when I touch the yellow, you win. And that's it, okay? So, you can obviously, or maybe it's not obvious, but you can make your maze project much fancier than this. You can add additional levels, and you can go further, but those are the steps for making a basic maze. Again, you can check out those instructions uh, by visiting my media literacy website, mdtech.casty.org. Please remember to go ahead and print or just have accessible on another screen uh, these scripts, and that can really make the process even faster as you create your maze project. Good luck.